10 and a half point Thanks. favorites. I'm going to give Toronto a 30% chance to win tonight. And I remind you, after game one at Cleveland, I gave Toronto a 0% chance of winning game two in Cleveland, in which they once again were embarrassed and humiliated and annihilated to the point that I said mannequins could play better defense than the Raptors were playing against those Cavs in game two. And yet, the focal point for me tonight, and the reason I'm going to up my percentage to give them a 30% shot, is Bismarck Biombo. He's got some Oklahoma City going in him, Stephen A. He reminds me of what's happening with the Thunder, except in microcosm and just one player in Toronto. While the Thunder have suddenly arrived, found themselves, figured it all out, so has Biombo. And it's been shocking to me that in games three and four, he was a dominating player in the paint, shot blocking, rebounding. And I wondered out loud on the show the other day, did Biombo, did, did he even make the trip to Cleveland for games one and two? Because I couldn't remember him playing. Obviously, the games got out of control so quickly, I couldn't remember any Raptors player playing. But in game one, Biombo had four rebounds and no blocks. In game two, he had five rebounds and two blocks. And then in games three and four combined, he had 40 rebounds and seven blocks and annihilated a player I have high regard for in Tristan Thompson. Completely outplayed him, made him look pretty foolish to me. I assume Tristan will rise and shine tonight. I assume that LeBron James, who now owes his team a game, after he disappeared down the stretch the last five and a half minutes of game four back in Toronto, I, I think LeBron's going to rise and shine tonight and make sure this is three to two going back to Toronto. But the other reason, and the final reason I give Toronto 30% chance, a fighting chance, is because all of a sudden, for the first time, maybe all year, Cleveland is second guessing Cleveland. There's some internal finger pointing, there's some angst. There's some, what, what do we, who are we? There's, are, are we three-point launchers or are we paint pounders? Who are we now? And I think they're, they're a little off balance. They're not sure. Kevin Love's way off balance. Not only does he have a, some kind of a tweaked knee, but his psyche's completely out of whack. So I don't know that they could trust him tonight. But I do trust LeBron tonight, and I think he and he alone w will be the difference in what, what I do think will be a battle. This will not resemble games one or two, but I still think Cleveland will make it three to two. Well, I'm going to point my uh, uh, focus in the direction of LeBron James. Kevin Love has indeed shot five for 23 over the last two games. Uh, he's been pretty pathetic offensively. He needs to get himself going and remind the world that he's worth at least a portion of the $113 million that he's receiving. J.R. Smith needs to recognize that just because you're not making jump shots doesn't mean you can't play the game of basketball. There is such a thing as dribbling and driving to the basket, getting fouled and going to the free throw line because we know you can do that. Okay, Matthew Dellavedova, it would help that, you know, if in shoot arounds and warm ups, if you could hit nine or ten uh, three-point shots. Could you try not to shoot an air ball at a critical moment from a wide-open three-point shot in the right corner? That would really, really be nice. Uh, and, and Tristan Thompson, uh, a guy that I'm incredibly fond of. I'm happy he got his money. But your lone job description is to man the interior from a rebounding and shot blocking and defensive presence nevertheless, but that's your lone responsibility. It's bad enough that you didn't do it that well, but to be completely dominated over the course of two games by a Bismack Biombo waving his finger like he's Dikembe Mutombo, Tristan Thompson should be embarrassed and make, do, make sure he does everything he can to make amends. Having said all of that, I'm going to reiterate, I'm looking at LeBron James. I do understand that he played nearly 46 minutes. I do understand that fatigue may have played a factor. But as far as I'm concerned, if fatigue was so much of a factor, what the hell were you on the court for? Go to the bench, take a 60-second breather if you can. Do whatever, all right, and then come back on the court. Drink a, drink a splash of Gatorade or whatever it is that you drink. Gatorade, Powerade, whatever it is, okay? Whatever has the, that alkaline and whatever it is, okay? <laughs> or ele electrolytes, Electrolyte, rather. Electrolytes, yeah. Electrolytes, okay? Be careful here's the deal. alkaline. Here, yeah. here, here, here's, here's the deal. LeBron James scored his last basket with five minutes and 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 
At that juncture, the Cleveland Cavaliers were up 94-92 after overcoming an 18-point deficit. You are universally recognized, accurately so, as being one of the top two players on the planet. And you attempt one shot in the last five and a half minutes? And you don't attempt, attempt one single shot in the last three? Against Toronto? Against Damari Carroll? Uh, and, 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 and in the meantime, y'all can't stop Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan, two all-stars, very good. But I think when we look at them, if you look at a tandem, Skip, I ask you to pick three, to, to pick of these three. Klay Thompson and Steph Curry, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, or DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Who's going to finish third? It's going to be the boys in Toronto. Yeah. And you can't. You can and throw you can. in LeBron and Kyrie in there, too, just for that. No, I'm just saying, all right, all right, for them. Who's going right. to come in last place? Yeah. Who's going to come in last w place? It's going to be Toronto. Yeah. And you can't stop them. They both drop plus 30 on you, both of them, both of them. Not 67. even one of them, both. Yeah. I mean, come on. So I'm looking at it, and I'm like, look, the king, King James, handle it. I have no doubt that he can. Yeah. And I'm not getting on him for how he played. He had 29 points on the 16 shots. I'm just sitting there. The only thing I'm getting on LeBron about here is shoot the damn ball. That's it. That's all I'm getting on him about. I'm not talking about misses or makes. You could He, he could have shot 10 times and missed all 10 of his shots. I'd have said skip, bad break. Yep, it happens. I agree. My issue, my issue is how do you justify attempting one shot in the last 528 of a tight game in the conference finals when a win would put you in position to close them out on your home court tonight. How do you pass that up? That don't, that don't make sense to me. me that don't make sense to me. Okay. So now, here's the deal. The pressure now falls squarely back on the home team, LeBron's team. The pressure is off the visiting team. And you know and I know Toronto very well might just be a home court product this year where they play way better at that's, home that's than they do they on are. the road. Okay? That's who they are. That's fine. But you know and I know the Raptors are feeling real good about themselves right now because pressure is off. They did what they had to do. It's two all. Nobody expects them. They're ten and a half point underdogs tonight. You tell me. You don't think they'll play a little fast and loose tonight? Like just they might let it play fly? They might play fast and loose, but I think that they will get I'm gonna I'm gonna side with LeBron James here. I believe that they are going to get overwhelmed tonight, lose by plus 20, and then they're gonna go back to Toronto and it's gonna be a tightly contested yeah. contest that Cleveland is going to pull out. Even if Cleveland wins, if this series goes seven games, it's a disappointment. I don't see Toronto losing by plus 20 tonight. Okay. I just think they got too much confidence coming in. Uh, I, I hope you're right because I, I want to see LeBron have a big game tonight, but I, I don't think it'll be 20, maybe 10. He needs, he needs to make amends yeah, he does. for his no-show over the last five yep. minutes. Got offensively, it. of course. He was playing defense, but offensively. He needs to make amends for his no-show in the last five minutes. Our coverage starts 7.30 on NBA Countdown. We're going to step aside from the playoffs for a moment. Another very interesting subject to address here. So over the past 10 years, there's been a lot of focus in sports on numbers and percentages. Well, our Michael Wilbon suggests there is a racial divide on analytics. We get into it and debate it next. Stay here.